What gear mistakes did I make through hiking the Appalachian Trail? Ah, this is a question I get all of the time, all of the time. So finally, I'm gonna make a video about it and discuss it with you guys. Hello everyone, if you're new to the channel, I'm Audrey known as Glow Stick. I threw hikes the Appalachian Trail in 2018. Welcome, if you're coming back again for a second, third or fourth or fifth or whatever time, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate the support. Okay, so, the number one gear mistake that I made before my AT through hike was, I just didn't do very much gear research. I did not have much of a budget for gear. I already owned backpacking gear, although a lot of it was old and heavy. And so a lot of the stuff I was just like, oh, I already have this, I'm just gonna use what I have. And a lot of that stuff ended up being kind of heavy. <laughs> I really wish that I had put aside a certain chunk of money ahead of time to just get new gear. And I wish that I would have gone and done my research ahead of time to figure out like, oh, what do I really need to worry about in terms of gear? And you know, what weight should I really be carrying on my back? Because I had backpacked before the AT, not a ton. I was not a super experienced backpacker. I was a super experienced hiker, but not backpacker. And the longest I'd been out was like five days and it had been years since I had done that. Mostly I'd just been out for weekend trips. And I, I think that I just, because I started hiking or started backpacking when I was a teenager, back then it was normal to carry much heavier stuff. So I kind of just didn't really think anything of it. But modern technology has come a long way in terms of gear since like the year 2000 when I started backpacking. <laughs> and I ended up just carrying much heavier stuff than I needed to carry. And I could have saved my feet and my muscles a lot of grief had I just gotten lighter weight stuff. So I would recommend to all of you that you get yourself a budget for your gear, you prioritize what stuff you need lighter of, which stuff you know you might be able to use your old stuff of, and then go from there and figure out what your kit's gonna look like. So since the AT, I have pretty much overhauled my entire backpacking kit because I have had the means to do so and I'm doing a lot of backpacking in Colorado and I wanna do future long trails. So I just wanna make my life easier. And I would say the, the big thing that, the big things that I've changed up is the big three, my backpack, my tent, and my sleeping bag. So I'm gonna show you guys what I had on the AT and what I now have instead. Okay, let's start with the sleeping bag. On the AT, this is a sleeping bag I already owned, but I took out there my Kelty Cosmic Down Zero Degree Sleeping Bag. I am a very cold person. I don't generate a lot of heat when I'm not moving. I am prone to anemia, which you guys watch my channel, you heard me talk about how I got pretty bad anemia on the AT because I didn't take care of my nutrition. But anyway, so I took out a zero degree sleeping bag, the Kelty Cosmic Down. This sleeping bag I did find to be pretty warm and comfortable, although there were a couple of nights that I was still freezing my tush off, even with a zero degree sleeping bag and a whole bunch of clothes. I wore pretty much all my clothes for the first month, month and a half of the trail. But this sleeping bag weighs like four and a half pounds. And that is just ridiculous. You should aim for all of your big three, in my opinion, unless you're like a super ultra lighter, in which case don't listen to me because I'm not a super ultra lighter. I'm just like a middle of the road backpacker, just like very practical about things. I want things, I wanna feel comfortable while I'm hiking and I wanna feel comfortable at camp, so I'm just very middle of the road. But anyway, so all of your big three items, in my opinion, should be around two pounds, less if you can, but around two pounds is a good goal for you. So four and a half pounds for a sleeping bag is, that's not good, that's not good. And so I was out there and Georgia is very mountainous and I was just like struggling, struggling up those mountains for the first few weeks. And this was part of the reason why. I did, when I got to, to Damascus, they kind of say, okay, when you get to Damascus, you can get rid of some of your winter stuff, which I don't know if I would totally agree with that because I'm, because the Grayson Highlands, which are north of Damascus, if you're going northbound, are still like higher elevation and can be quite chilly in the spring. So I went back for a section hike 
of the Grayson Highlands. I did like a 90 mile section with some friends this past spring and we went in mid-May and it was still quite chilly at night. So just keep in mind, it can definitely still get below freezing past Damascus. And of course, I'm talking like if you're going northbound, starting at the normal time, which is between mid-March and mid-April. I started March 20th and I, I got rid of my winter gear in Damascus and I ended up being okay. But I, I might say once you get north of the Grayson Highlands would be a better time to get rid of that stuff. Okay, so when I got to Damascus, I invested at one of the outdoor stores in a new sleeping bag because I no longer wanted to carry my four and a half pound sleeping bag with me, especially because I didn't feel like I needed a zero degree sleeping bag any longer. But let's be real, it was mostly because I didn't want to carry it anymore. <laughs> anyway, so I ended up getting this little, uh, this is a Sea to Summit Traveler bag. It's just like a 50 degree bag. It weighs just over a pound. It's down, it's very comfy, and it really worked for me. I use this for the whole rest of the trail. I sent my big heavy sleeping bag home and I use this for the rest of the trail along with a sleeping bag liner. But there were some things that I never got rid of. So I never got rid of my puffy, I never got rid of my fleece, I never got rid of my warm sleep clothes until I was much for further north. So it's not like I just was like, okay, everything warm, I'm leaving it behind. No, I. I kind of went in phases of leaving things behind, but the first thing was the sleeping bag, which I replaced with this one. And I, I thought this worked really, really well for the whole rest of the trail. I really haven't used it since though, because the nights like in Colorado backpacking up in the mountains get so frigid, even in the middle of summer. So it really hasn't come in handy out here, but for East Coast summer back, summer backpacking, summer camping, this thing's great, especially with a sleeping bag liner and some warmish clothes. Okay, so that was my sleeping bag that I had on the AT and I have since switched that out. And I learned my learned from my mistake the first time around and ended up with this new gear, doing a ton of research and being very particular about what I wanted and what, what I ended up buying. And for my sleeping bag, I ended up with a Western Mountaineering, I believe this is called a Prolite. It's a 20 degree down bag and it's awesome. I totally love it. Like I said, I'm a really cold person and this, the insulating properties of this are very strong and very obvious to me because I can go in this bag and it might take me a bit of time to actually warm up in the bag. I could be like freezing when I get in there, but a couple hours later, I will be just so freaking toasty. And this weighs just under two pounds. It's awesome. I love it and I find it very comfortable. I do wish like the legs are kind of narrow, which I understand because like obviously they're trying to save weight. Like this is like a premium backpacking sleeping bag. Like it's supposed to be lightweight, but warm. So I understand they're trying to save weight, but it is kind of, I like to, I move around a lot in the night, you know, I move my legs around, I toss and turn. So I do occasionally feel a little constricted with the smaller, the narrower legs, but it's, it's worth it for the fact that it like doesn't bog me down when I'm backpacking. Yeah, so there's the sleeping bags. Next gear mistake of the big three was my pack. I had the Osprey Aura 65. It was pretty comfortable when I first started using it. I really like the Osprey suspension system to kind of keep sweat off of your back. And I did find it comfortable at first. It's got so many pockets, which I really loved. But again, this was just way too heavy. Like so, so heavy. This is also over four pounds. That's totally unnecessary. I also constantly, constantly got comments about how big my backpack was. So different backpack companies, uh, they measure how big your pack is in different ways. So some companies use only the inside of the pack. So with this Osprey Aura, that is uh, 65 liters, but actually this is a size small, so it's not actually 65 liters, it's like 62. But that's 62 liters inside this pack. Other companies use all of the pockets. So whereas I read ahead of time that, you know, 60, 65 is pretty reasonable to take on a long trail like the AT, 
the Ospreys are such, they're, they're much bigger than a lot of other packs when you think about how they're measuring their leaders. So this is, it was just, it was too big. It was ridiculously big. And you know, I barely fit all my stuff in it at the very beginning of the trail, but that's because I had that massive giant sleeping bag and all this, you know, just like bigger, heavier gear than I needed. So once I have switched out some of this other gear, like this pack now just feels ridiculously big to me. So anyway, mostly the problem with this pack was that it was too heavy, but also this pack stopped fitting me while I was on the AT. Like it didn't fit me around the waistband anymore. And on the size chart, it says that this waistband goes down to like a 24 inch waist. And this is actually like even the extra small backpack doesn't have a smaller waistband. And I reached out to Osprey about this because obviously it's problematic that the backpack wasn't fitting me anymore and like my waist was not down to 24 inches. So I was like, reach out to them. I was like, what's the deal? This doesn't fit anymore. And their suggestion was that I strap a pool noodle around my waist for the rest of the trail. And I think I reached out to them like three months in. So I had three more months to go. So they wanted me to strap a pool noodle around my waist for the rest of the trail. And I was like, well, your size chart says this should still fit me. So like, obviously there's a problem here. And they were like, we don't deal with size issues. So just get a pool noodle. So anyway, I just sort of you know, didn't have a backpack that fit me properly for the rest of the trail, which was fine, but not great. And I just was very unimpressed with that customer service as I watched people with other packs have issues and get like totally new packs for free from companies. And just, they just seem to have much better customer service than Osprey. So I personally will never buy another Osprey pack. That's just me. Anyway, so since then I have switched out to a pack that I really love, like really, really love, which is the Gossamer Gear Mariposa. This is also a 60 liter bag, but as I was saying, some companies don't use just the inside of the pack, but all the pockets and Gossamer Gear is one of those companies. So I believe the inside of this pack is actually only 36 liters, but when you add all of the outside pockets, it's 60. And I find it's the perfect size for me. The only time I occasionally have trouble fitting all my things in there is when I have to carry a bear canister, which is pretty rare. I, if I don't have to carry one, I'm not going to. Like I use an Ursac. I have an aluminum liner for it. Some places you can use an Ursac instead of a, a bear canister, which I always choose to do just because bear canisters, I feel like the technology needs to catch up on those. Like there's gotta be better materials, lighter materials that you can use. Like they're just so heavy and bulky and like weigh you down so bad. But anyway, the rest of the time, I never have an issue fitting my stuff in my pack. It's the perfect size and it's really, really comfortable. My only complaint, and this is a small one, is that it makes my back really sweaty because it doesn't have that amazing suspension system that the Osprey does, unfortunately. But it's worth it because this pack is also like under two pounds. So big improvement. I've lost, cut a bunch of weight with this and I, I just love the pack. Like it fits me like a glove. It, it's great. I just really love it. It's really comfortable. And last of the big three is the tent. I actually no longer have my tent that I hiked the AT with. I really liked that tent, but it broke this past summer. So I can't show you physically the tent, but I can tell you about it. Okay, so I actually started the trail with a Kelty backpacking tent that I just already owned. I think it was a Kelty Salida, maybe. It was a two-person tent. It was also over four pounds. <laughs> so if you look at the weight of my big three when I started the AT, they were all over four pounds. So that was at least 12 pounds and like probably a little bit more just for my big three, which is just totally unnecessary with today's gear. <laughs> so unnecessary. So heavy. I was really weighed down and I'm not like a very big person. I'm only 5'3 and that was a lot for me. So I was really suffering at the beginning of the trial. But anyway, so a few days into the AT, I actually traded tents with a couple. They were sharing a tent and their tent was a Big Agnes Fly Creek 2 and it was too small for them. So couples take note, you might want to get a three person tent. And I had this Kelty two person tent, which felt so luxurious. Like I had so much room in this tent. So they were complaining their tent was too small. 
I was complaining my tent was too heavy. And so they suggested a tent trade and I accepted. <laughs> it changed things for me because that tent, I believe was like two and a half pounds. It was much smaller and it was a great tent. It was a great starter tent to take on the AT. Uh, it was the perfect size for me and my pack. I really dug it. Some people don't like that tent specifically because it has like a front opening instead of a side opening, but I didn't, I didn't mind. It, it just felt very cozy to me and I really loved my tent and it was my little home for so long and I loved it. It wasn't fantastic in high winds and it also was not fantastic in heavy rainstorms. So I got flooded out a couple of times and one of those times I was in Pennsylvania up on a ridge at a campsite. My friend Chef and I were camping there together. The rest of our family was in a shelter and we got like five inches of rain in one night. It was crazy. Like I was sitting there, I had cell phone reception. I was watching the radar and we were just like in the red for hours, like hours. So I'm not sleeping because it's so loud, like thunder, lightning, rain, whatever. So I'm not sleeping. And slowly I see the water just like creeping up my tent, like creeping up, creeping up, creeping up. And I'm like, oh shoot. So I get everything into dry bags and I eventually have to move my tent into like high grass, basically. Meanwhile, my friend chef is in his Z-Pex duplex tent, just floating on top of the water, just watching TV, calling a bunch of girls he was talking to, like having the time of his life, just floating in the tent. And so I thought, well, you know what? Eventually, I think I gotta get one of those tents. So like I said, I had my big Agnes until this past summer where it broke beyond repair. And I finally got a tent I've been dreaming about forever. This is the Z-Pax Pleximid. So it's the one person version of that tent that my friend chef had. And it's, oh my gosh, so light. This is like not including the stakes. This tent's only like 15 ounces. And I bought like really lightweight titanium stakes to go with it. So that's not a huge added weight. And then you use your tracking poles to set this up. Actually you only need one tracking pole, which is a big reason I was eyeing this tent as well, because sometimes not like when I'm doing a long trail necessarily, but when I'm just backpacking around in Colorado or wherever, sometimes I'll set up and then like hike onward somewhere else, or I'll set up and then I'll have to go find water or something like that. So I like still, I always, I always hike with poles all of the time. So I like having at least one free in case I wanna hike around somewhere else aside from camp. So this one only uses one trekking pole to set up, which I really love. I've only used this tent on a couple of weekend trips so far because I got this at the end of the summer when mine broke, when my other tent broke, but so far I really love it. And I just, it's just incredibly, incredibly light. So I'm so, so happy about that. This is an expensive tent though, be warned if you look it up. And I also did get caught in a rainstorm in this tent and it held up really well. So, so far I'm very happy with that change, but obviously I don't have a lot of experience using it yet. Whereas that big Agnes I had had for like, you know, six months straight. So that's the big three. I would say aside from that, I only made a couple of other small gear mistakes aside from on the whole, my stuff being way too heavy. And one of those mistakes was that for my water filter, I bought the Sawyer Squeeze Mini. If you watch my channel, you've seen me use the Sawyer Squeeze, the normal size one, but originally I bought the Sawyer Squeeze Mini because it's smaller and more lightweight and all my other stuff was so heavy. So I was like, ah, I'll cut weight with this. Not worth it, not worth it. Okay, so if you're unfamiliar, this is the Sawyer Squeeze. You get a water bag, you hook this into it, you squeeze the water out, it's clean, it's great. It's very, this is a wonderful filter, I love it. But the mini is like, maybe like half the size, it's much thinner, the spout is much smaller, and oh my gosh, it's so slow. It's so slow. And mine leaked, so I was there in, in Georgia where it was freezing cold, there was snow on the ground, there was ice, 
my hands were getting freezing filtering this water because it was leaking out the bottom all over my hands. It was going so slow, like so much slower than my friends with the full size ones. And I was just like, what am I doing with my life? This sucks. Because you spend so much time throughout the course of a long trail getting water. Like you have to get water so many times if you're talking about like every time you need to get water for six months is gonna be in a stream or a spring or whatever. So that's a lot of time that you're wasting with the mini if you are using a mini. I just, I hated that filter. I cannot recommend it at all. And so I upgraded in Damascus, Virginia, where I got my new sleeping bag. I also upgraded to the full size Sawyer Squeeze and my life was so much easier after that. <laughs> so much easier. I can't recommend enough getting the full size over the mini. They also have like a middle size one now. I believe it's called the Macro maybe. And I have not used that one myself. I've read that it's also not as fast as the full size one. So if that matters to you, then maybe just go with the full, but I can't speak in depth about it because I have not tried that one myself. Okay, and the last mistake that I made that I will discuss, I might've made other mistakes, but by this point, I don't remember them. <laughs> so these were the big ones. So the last one, okay, this is kind of a superficial mistake, <laughs> but, when you are choosing your outfit that you're gonna wear on trail, choose wisely, both for practical reasons. So obviously you want stuff that's quick drying and lightweight and all that good stuff. But also keep in mind that you are gonna be wearing this outfit basically every day for many months on end until you probably have to replace an item of that clothing. And keep in mind that doing a long trail like the AT is a huge moment in your life. This is something you are gonna talk about forever. You're gonna look back on pictures on forever. You're gonna think about forever. Like this is gonna be in, it's gonna be important to you, okay? And the photos and the videos that you have from this experience are gonna be important to you. So make sure that you are wearing an outfit that you like seeing in photos. <laughs> Whenever you look back on this journey, I just, I did not choose my outfit carefully and it wasn't that cute. And like I said, this is a superficial one, but I look back on those photos and while mostly I'm thinking about like, oh, the adventure and the joy in my friends. And I can just picture exactly where I was. And this is what was happening at that time and all that wonderful stuff. I do also look at, look at it and think I should have worn a cuter outfit. <laughs> I should have thought that through, but I did it. So anyway, I know that's really silly, but it is what it is. Okay. So those are the gear mistakes I made. And then I'll also say regarding getting gear that's lighter weight and spending more money on new gear and all that. Like, I don't think that if you already have backpacking stuff, like you do not need to overhaul your entire kit, like some things that you have are gonna be totally fine. Like I said, come up with a budget, see what you have to spend, and then prioritize the items that you maybe wanna use your old stuff, or you maybe wanna get used stuff, or you are gonna actually spend the money to get new stuff. So one thing, for example, that I use on the AT that was not like a name brand or like a lightweight or a cool item, I guess, that I had that I thought actually worked really well, was my backpacking stove. So for my stove, I literally just bought a $10 stove on Amazon. Just like a, just like a cheap little backpacking stove. 10 bucks, lasted me the entire AT. It was great. What a bargain. <laughs> I still have it though. It doesn't work very well anymore. It just like the threading kind of got wore out so it doesn't seal super well to the gas canisters anymore. So I have switched out to like, you know, a lighter weight one just because I needed a new stove anyway. So I have switched to the MSR Pocket Rocket and it is definitely lighter and it definitely cooks a little bit faster, though I would not say that it cooks significantly faster. And this one is like quite a bit pricier. I want to say this is like 50 or $60, but again, like I had the means to 
buy the more expensive one and to switch this out. But if I was gonna do a long trail and a budget again, this is probably another thing that I would just like go the cheaper route with. I don't feel like getting the more expensive one is completely necessary. And I've also seen, I'll warn you, I've never used a jet boil. I just don't like the concept of them because they have the little uh, pots that connect right to the stove. So I don't like that. But anyway, so I've seen several jet boils break out on trail. Like it seems to be kind of common that they break. Again, I haven't used one myself, so this is totally anecdotal, but I'm just saying like my cheap stove lasted the entire AT. I've seen a bunch of those more expensive jet boils break. So again, just prioritize the things that you think you need, like the fancier, more expensive, the more lightweight stuff. And then, you know, maybe go with the cheaper, older, heavier options for little things that maybe don't matter as much like your stove. So yeah, those are the gear mistakes that I made on the Appalachian Trowel. And if I were to do it all over again, I would just get way lighter stuff. I would just get the stuff that I have now, which, you know, is basically me, me correcting what I did wrong before. Now I have backpacking stuff that I just did a ton of research on and, and really took my time to figure out what it was I wanted. And I'm really happy with my backpacking kit right now. So it's worked out. And I'll also say, I always say this, but just because you buy the lightest and most expensive gear doesn't make, doesn't mean you're going to make it all the way to Katahdin. And just because you're using the heavier, older stuff, maybe you can't afford to buy new stuff or you just don't want to, that doesn't mean you're not going to make it to Katahdin. Like my bag was kind of heavy. I made it all the way. I saw lots of people with older gear. And I also saw, saw lots of people with fancy gear who, who did not make it. So it's not all about the gear by any means. But again, I just keep getting asked, what did, what did I do wrong on the AT in terms of gear? So here's my answer. Anyway, hope you found this video helpful. If you did, give me a like. Don't forget to subscribe to my channel for more hiking, backpacking, Appalachian Trail, and Colorado content. I'm going to have a lot of fun little backpacking trips coming up this year, I think, though I haven't completely decided what they are yet. I'll let you guys know when I know. And yeah, thanks for being here, you guys. I always appreciate the support. Alrighty, I'll see you all next time. Have a great day.